as much as you need and still have plenty more to go if you need more, i.e. headroom. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, so if you're having to turn your preamp all the way up, which is where honestly most of the noise comes from uh, is because that's, you know, that's like if you were to equate it with plumbing of any sort, it would be like the pump, you know, that's pumping that signal or yeah. that water through your, uh, your through your plumbing system, you know, and that's the part that makes noise. You know, a microphone can be extremely quiet, but when you add that preamp that has to pump that signal up, uh, that's where the noise comes from. So if you're not getting enough gain out of the preamp that you have in com you know uh, combined with the microphone that you have then you might need to get a better preamp that allows you to get the signal that you need without adding noise um, and allowing you to have more headroom available uh, if you sh should you ever need it right great so i'd like to just get on to a little bit of um, sort of maintenance, day-to-day -day kind of stuff. So how do you maintain your microphone day-to-day -day so that it has a nice long life? And how long should, you, should your microphone last? I'll, I'll jump in on this one. Uh, I'm probably setting a terrible example here, but I don't do much of anything for maintenance with my mics. Mm. They're plugged in. They're powered at all times. I don't take them down so that at any time I can, I can walk into the, to the booth and do my thing. Mm. Um, every couple weeks I'll come in with a Swiffer and, and dust off the top of them. Um, I always use a pop filter to keep moisture out of the, out of the diaphragm. But, um, beyond that, there's, there's not a ton of maintenance that goes into it and a, a good mic well taken care of with the exception of ribbons and tube mics will last a long, long time. I mean, decades, eons, yeah. um, you know, if you're not dropping it, you're not banging around. It's not your your travel mic. It's it's set up in a studio and well cared for. Um, there is no reason for it not to last almost indefinitely. Yeah. I mean, we do have to understand, you know, a large diaphragm condenser microphone certainly is going to be more delicate than, say, you know, I mean, they use shotgun microphones on film sets. They right. travel with them. They mount to cameras. They get, you know, dynamic microphones or, you know, live on stages, um, which is, you know, I spent the first third of my career live doing live sound. I mean, these things get right. complete drummers hit them with sticks yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and hard too, right? Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of that you know microphones are actually pretty durable um so yeah, now large diaphragm condensers the kind that we use most of course are more delicate but we're also not using them in that same context so you know they're durable enough that you know if you if you just really don't mess around with it too much you don't drop it you treat it you know nicely um you know, it's probably going to last you indefinitely. Now, obviously, tube microphones, it is better to leave them powered on um, because that way, you know, it, what happens is with tube gear of any kind, you know, just like light bulbs, uh, they often blow when you're turning power on or turning power off. Yeah. Um, you know, light bulbs rarely burn out when they're just on. You know, and just, I mean, they just don't go, you know, they just don't blow yeah. uh, when they're just on and running. Uh, they, t you know, it's that powering up and powering down that really uh, puts a lot more strain on the electronics than anything else. So, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't consider Emmett's to be a bad example at all because honestly, I do pretty much the same thing. You know, I really, my mic just sits here and it's on, ready to go. Um, and I travel with my, I use a 416 uh, mm. and I travel with it. Um, but I know that it's durable. I know that I'm not going to, you know, it's probably not going to really cause me any problems. I, you know, I obviously make sure that the screws are tight on it and all of that stuff and that the connection points are uh, clean and things like that. But other than that, I don't really do a whole lot with it. And I actually do uh, keep the um, windscreen on mine as well for that same reason, Yeah, uh, to keep the moisture out and all of that. Great. I'm the same. Glad to know that I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, Indulge me on this final question before I get to audience questions. I'm just interested to know, what is your dream microphone, Emmett? 
Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Telefunken 251 and oh, yeah. many of its clones too. The Bach 251 is is great also. And I hear the Peluso is cool, but I haven't used it. But uh, there's something about that mic that just sounds really different to me than everything else out there. Right. And I've never been able to duplicate it with EQ. I've never been able to duplicate it in post. Something kind of magic about it. And so I'd, I'd love to have one of those hanging here. Cool. What about you, Dan? You know, for me, when I was working in music, it mattered a lot more to me. Mm. Um, and I used to fantasize about the AKG C1. Uh, mm. That was just, to me, that was like the holy grail of microphones uh, back when I was doing music. But now, um, you know, I'm pretty happy with my 416, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it just works well for me. And, I mean, I do have like 40 microphones uh, that, you oh, know, wow. date back. Date, they date back all the way from my live sound days. Now, a lot of them are 57s, 58s, dynamic microphones for drums and things like that. Mm. I do have a, a, a ribbon microphone, um, you know, a, a, a U4. 47 clone um you know and they're all yeah they're they're all just really great microphones um so but i don't fantasize about microphones so much anymore i think if i still worked in music i would probably uh or, or if i were doing a lot more music I, I would probably uh be much more uh tuned into oh what do i want next and that right. sort of thing but it's you know it's uh it's much uh much harder to uh, get excited about all those different tones when I know I've got something that really works well for me now. 